Hi all, it's V, and this is Glastonbury in Somerset, England. I received a message from a friend in the U.S. saying, have you ever been to Glastonbury? And I thought, the festival or the place? And then I thought, it doesn't really matter. I haven't been to either. So when I said no, she said she'd love to see the area around Glastonbury. Would I like to join her and a friend? So I did. And we had a fantastic time. Obviously, all of this was before we went into lockdown. Was filmed not long before we went into lockdown, actually. But we started our day at Glastonbury Abbey. A ruin now, but wow, this must have been one spectacular place. The visit starts in the museum, and it is such a good museum. As you'll see, it has different artifacts from the church and the abbey. It has stained glass windows, things like that. Apologies for the reflections. Most of the things were held behind glass. At the end of your walk around the museum, there's a model of the Abbey as it might have looked in 1539. It gives you a great idea of how magnificent it looked just before dissolution of the monasteries under Henry VIII. Legend has it that Joseph of Arimathea in the first century visited the area and started the first religious community or Abbey on this spot. Archaeology and records show that Romans and Saxons occupied the site, and the abbey's founding dates to at least the early 7th century. In the 10th century, the abbey was enlarged and destroyed by a major fire in 1184. It was subsequently rebuilt, and by the 14th century was one of the richest and most powerful monasteries in England. Kings and queens visited. Two kings were buried in the abbey. The Lady Chapel, finished in the 12th century, was famous for its very rich sculpted ornamentation. This door, for example, shows the birth of Christ, the three kings, the epiphany, the entire story in sculpture form.
From at least the 12th century, the Glastonbury area has been associated with the legend of King Arthur. I've always wondered if King Arthur actually existed, and the consensus seems to be that there's no solid evidence for his historical existence, but that there was most certainly a King Arthur who inspired the legend, and probably the legend is an amalgamation of several people. After the fire destroyed most of the church, the monks dug a gravesite that they claimed was King Arthur and his queen, Guinevere. Now, the monks could have been doing this just to draw tourists and money to the church that they needed to rebuild. But there is a gravesite there. This is an old cemetery, so who knows? Years later, the bones in this gravesite were reburied at the altar, and King Edward I and Queen Eleanor attended the reburial. So there was a tomb, and there were people reburied at the high altar, so it could have been Arthur and Guinevere. The abbot's kitchen, known for its gargoyles outside, has been redone inside to give you some idea of what it would have looked like. It's a medieval octagonal building, and it has been described as one of the best preserved medieval kitchens in Europe. The vast grounds contain kitchen gardens, herb gardens, ponds, an orchard, and the ruins of the monastic buildings where the monks would have lived and eaten.
After walking through the monastic ruins, you come to the stunning ruins of the church. It must have towered above everyone and everything around it. Back behind the ruins, you can see Abbey House, which is private. The area of the nave and where they would have reburied King Arthur and Guinevere is marked out. According to legend, the Glastonbury Tor is the Isle of Avalon, burial site of King Arthur. The Tor is a conical hill in Glastonbury, England, which is topped by a 14th century roofless St. Michael's Tower. There's a little lamb, a couple little lambs. There's a wee lamb. It is one of the most famous landmarks in Somerset and is known as one of the most spiritual sites in the country. There are indications this hill has been used since ancient times. But the first church to stand on the tour was destroyed probably in the major earthquake of 1275. The church was rebuilt in the 14th century and only the tower stands today. It may have been a place for ancient ritual, it's certainly a place for pilgrimage in the past. There are two slopes up to the tour on opposite sides. One is the steep way, which is mostly steps. The other gradually ascends. You kind of go up a bit, around a bit, up a bit. The guy at the visitor center told me it would take an hour, hour and a half to do the slow up a bit, around a bit, side. But it didn't take us that long. It took us maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, and we were at the top. We descended the steep side. The views are spectacular. The English countryside from every angle. It was quite windy at the top, so very hard to speak to camera. But it was so worth the climb. I highly recommend it. Just the views are stunning. Not to mention, mm, it's possible you're at King Arthur's grave. Who knows? It's worth it for the views, even if you don't believe the mythology behind the tour. But this is no doubt a site that has been used since ancient times.
Our last stop in Glastonbury was the Chalice Well. Situated at the foot of Glastonbury Tor, it's a natural spring and surrounding gardens. Archaeological evidence suggests the well has been in almost constant use for at least 2,000 years. The water takes on a reddish orangish hue from the iron oxide deposits. The running water is incredibly soothing and the gardens are stunning. There is one area, the Lion's Head Drinking Fountain. It's the only place in the garden where the water is safe to drink and they suggest drinking just a few sips. We did see people filling up entire water bottles, but they suggest just a few sips will suffice. I found the trees particularly interesting. They were gorgeous and obviously very old. It's a beautiful place considered holy by some. Definitely a fantastic place for quiet contemplation.
concludes our trip to Glastonbury. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. Thank you.